Okay, so recently I bought this rail subwoofer, which is uh, it's quite nice. Round the back here, it's got a setting. There's a switch here for standby mode or always on. On standby mode, it's supposed to detect an input signal, such as through here, a voltage coming from the uh, the amplifier and switch on. But it's not very sensitive. Um, I've actually hacked this a little bit because I've connected this RCA input to an XLR output on the amplifier and I haven't shorted the um, uh, the earth pin across so it's actually getting 4 volts uh, rather than 2 volts so there's 4 volts going into this here which actually might help a little bit to switch this on a little bit earlier when you know when there are some transients with low frequency but it, I'm still not very satisfied with it so I'm not satisfied with the sensitivity of this uh, standby function so uh, basically I want something that causes it rather than leaving it switched on all the time which is the option that REL recommend I'd like something that switch, um, switches this on when the uh, the amplifier is switched on or the television is switched on and here's a piece of kit which I bought it's a this is a normal socket this is what they call a master socket here and these sockets here are slaves. So when something draws above a certain, I don't know, two and a half watts of power from here, then these switch on. It works. It does work. Um, it's not without its problems, though. It's incredibly noisy. In fact, it's so noisy, it buzzes so much that it's actually unusable. So the solution that I have at the moment is I have a smart switch switched so that uh, on a timer so that the subwoofer switches on in the evening so that it's on and it's not just burning power all the time I know that it's a lot of power it's I don't know 17 watts or something probably cost about 50 quid a year if it was on 24 7 but uh, I just don't really like to do that so it would be great if I could get this to work now the offending article from the circuit board is this thing here it's a three uh, milli henry uh, inductor. So I've figured out what this is and um, basically there are two pins here uh, and there's a big coil of wire going maybe around a ferrite core or something and it's a way of evening out energy on the circuitry and it vib it oscillates and currently I've um, I've actually soaked it in PVA glue under vacuum in a syringe so that it sort of pull all the bubbles out in case my other fix didn't work but fortunately, my other fix does work, and that's in place here at the moment. So I've just tested it, and what I've done is I've replaced this inductor with another inductor that I've ordered online. Um, it was a bit of a gamble. I'm not any kind of electronics aficionado at all. I've, I don't really know a huge amount about it, but I can solder stuff up. And um, so I ordered a, a 3 milli uh, Henry inductor with a resistance of 5 point something ohms, across here which is what I measured this to be and um, and I've soldered it in place and I've checked this and this does work um, I'm not finished with the video yet because actually I'm going to replace the capacitors on this board yeah okay so this was this uh, component that I was showing earlier and this is the inside of the unit and this was the location of that component there are two wires that are soldered I've had to bring wires up from the bottom of the circuit board to solder this thing in place it's actually it's kind of soldered upside down because I think it was originally designed to be melted onto a circuit board with where the solder here is but so that seemed to work okay so we've got a couple of little risers there it's glued with glue gun glue at the bottom onto the circuit board and I'm now going to replace all of these capacitors with uh, Rubicon capacitors and I'm going to put some more glue gun around this to stabilise it further so that it's uh, good for the long term. Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, so that's what it is. That's the offending article. And in the description I will put links to um, all of the components that I've used on the upgrade. But this one here, replacing that, that's the important one to suppress the noise. So even if you don't replace the capacitors, that's the one to do to fix a unit like this. Okay. So, the capacitors are replaced and that inductor's replaced. So I've got the um, 
TV plugged into the, uh, you know, normal, the amplifier is connected to the master and the subwoofer now is connected to one of the slave sockets. So hopefully now, which I'm sure will be the case, when I switch the TV and amplifier on, that should then trigger the switch on. Hey, hey the subwoofer, you can see there's a light at the back there now. That's now switched on. So that's triggered with the, uh, oh, it's perfect, that is, that's great. So, yeah, of course I'll, I shall tidy this up. If you can hear any noise in the background, some whirring noise, it's actually my, uh, my computer down here with the uh, graphics card fan going full pelt as it's using this AI program to uh, upgrade the Andromeda strain. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, anyway, that's fantastic. Uh, that's working brilliantly and that's super, super silent now. There's no noise. I'll put the, the phone right down to that. You can't hear any any noise from it. It's, it's totally silent now with that um, upgraded uh, inductor. So, um, well, I'll put this on YouTube and like I said, I'll put the uh, link in the description for the, uh, the components that I use to do the upgrade.